Welcome back to Honest News. I wanted to begin by um, confessing that God has recently uh, corrected me on something that I recently said. And uh, our objective is not to lead God's people into error. We are not trying to lead you wrong. Sometimes we do misspeak and uh, say things that are uh, contrary even to God's word. And so you out there that are always looking to find fault in Brother Joseph or this ministry, get ready to lick your chops. So recently in the message we gave yesterday, um, we mentioned that Apollyon, or Ab, Ad, Abaddon, Abaddon, excuse me, or Apollyon. We mentioned that this is Satan coming up out of the bottomless pit and going to uh, incarnate that man of sin, that wicked. And this morning the Lord corrected me on this. I, I'm the first one, people. I love to be corrected by God, but I love it when He gives me the grace to be willing to be corrected. Amen? Not all of us are willing to be corrected. But the Lord chastens those He loves. And if the Lord doesn't correct me, then how am I supposed to correct you? How am I supposed to be used by God to help his people, to be corrected. And I know there's a lot of talk out there on the speculation of who Abaddon or Apollyon is. But Lord made it very clear to me this morning that Apollyon is being kept in reserve. Are you listening? Just like the angels in the river Euphrates that are going to be loosed to go out to to kill men. So this angel, Apollyon, destroyer, is being kept in the bottomless pit and will not be loosed until the sixth seal is released. An angel from heaven will come down with a key to a bottomless pit and loose Apollyon, the king or the, the leader of this army of locusts. And we are not going to go into the detail of this right now because that's not what this message is about. But I wanted to clear this up for you. Help you to understand Brother Joseph is not above uh, being corrected. We're willing to be corrected. Why would we not want to be corrected? Why would we want to be wrong and think we're right? You know, that's just foolish. Person that wants to believe they're right even though they're wrong, that's insanity. So, we are going to be sharing a message about Apollyon. And so stay tuned for that message in the future. But today we're going to be dealing with the rewards for good and evil. That God is going to reward every man according to his works. Do you hear what I said? Every work is going to be rewarded. And I will tell you this, the Lord's not going to reward good for evil. How many know that? God is not going to give a good reward for an evil work. 
Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16, beginning with verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, we ought to pay attention, Jesus is speaking. Not just a man, amen? The eternal Son of God. And Jesus said he did not speak his own words. So how many know the Father is speaking? Through the Son. Let's listen to what God is saying, folks. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. In another place, the Lord says, take up his own cross. Daily. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Let me read that again. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for the truth. We thank you for reality. We thank you for the light that shineth in a dark place. More sure word of prophecy the Holy Scripture. We thank you, God, for sending the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, not only to be with us, but to be in us, to lead and guide us into all truth, that we don't have to walk in darkness in this hour, Lord, but we can walk in the light. Ask, Lord, that you will anoint those that are listening to hear what the Spirit is saying. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of His Father with His angels. It's going to happen. And then He shall reward every man according to His works. It's important what our works are. How many know that's the only thing you're going to be marked by? That's the only thing that you're going to be rewarded on. Your works. Amen. What are your works? What are your actions? And the Lord helps us to understand that before an action becomes an action, it starts out as a thought. Amen? And the Lord says, I want to help you with your thoughts. I want to help you in how you think. Because this is the incubator. This is where evil works begin. It's where it starts. In your thought life. What you're thinking about. You don't just act. You have a thought. And you give place to that thought. You entertain that thought. And if it's an evil thought, 
it will eventually manifest in an evil work. Amen? Premeditated murder starts with a thought. You plan it out. Amen? Brothers and sisters, every evil work begins with an evil thought. Every evil work. It's premeditated. It is so important that we allow the Lord to help us with our thought life. It is so important that the Lord help us in how we think and what we're thinking about. Jesus said to those listening one day, he said, why do evil thoughts arise in your hearts? He knew the thoughts of men. And the closer I get to the Lord, the more I'm hearing the thoughts of men. Under the anointing, I hear the thoughts of people quite often now. Are you listening to me? And, it, and I don't have to altogether be in the same place where somebody is to hear their thoughts. The Lord can help me to hear the thoughts of my listeners on this broadcast. That's right. The Lord can help me to understand where you are at what you're thinking, where you are. Not to hurt, not to condemn, but to help. Evil thoughts will eventually become evil works. Now, reward is coming. Reward is coming. The Lord is coming with a reward. Now, we see there were those that thought that they were doing good works, right? Even to the degree that they consider them to be wonderful works. They thought they were doing wonderful works. Wonderful works. Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do all these wonderful works in your name? And he's going to say, I never knew you. I never knew you. And they're considering their works to be wonderful. Wonderful work. Jesus said, the works that I do, it's not me doing the works. It's the work of the Father. If our works are the works of the flesh, if they are the works that are perpetuated by our own strength, by our own thinking, Listen to me, people. You're not going to be rewarded with good for your works. That's why the scripture says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. It was granted unto her to be arrayed in fine linen which is the righteous works or the righteous acts of the saints. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? The righteous acts of the saints, the works that are good works. This is how the bride is making herself ready. She's making herself ready with good works, with righteous works with righteous acts. That's how she's weaving her garment, her wedding garment. Are you listening to me? Every time you do a righteous act, you allow the Holy Ghost to work through you, and you do a work 
that is a godly, good, righteous work that's not of your own strength or your own power, your own thinking, that light is applied to you. Did you hear what I said? Light is being applied to you. I was in a parking lot one day and I saw some garbage on the ground and I was stepped over it. We weren't going to pick it up. And the Lord said to me, he says, if I was to change you, transform your life every time you picked up a piece of garbage, how would you treat that piece of garbage? And, you know, in your, mind, in your mind, you're thinking, wow, not just this piece of garbage, God. Where's there's more? Help me to find more. Find all the garbage I can find. Right? That's what Jesus was saying to Peter when he said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. Je- Peter started saying, wash me all over. Wash my head. Wash my hands. The Lord is going to reward good for good and reward evil for evil. Listen to me. Those that are committing evil works are going to be rewarded with evil. That's right. They're going to be rewarded, eventually rewarded with destruction. In hell. In the lake of fire. When the scripture says the wages of sin is death. The wages. The reward of sin is death. But it's one thing to die in your physical body. What about the second death? What about death in hell? And in the lake of fire. Eternal death. Make no mistake about it, brothers and sisters. Based on our works, we will be rewarded. And again, it starts with your thoughts. It starts in the thoughts. Now, some folks can become so demon-possessed that they have no control anymore. That that thought takes over. And the person becomes a slave. This young man that shot up the school in Florida, he said, the voice said to him, do this, do this, do this, do this, do that. And it started out with small things. The, The voice would say to him, build a fire. And he'd build a fire. The voice would say, buy this gun. He'd buy the gun. And I'm sure the voice started out with even smaller things before he even said, build a fire. But that voice started saying, kill animals, kill birds. See? And he was asked, he was asked in the interrogation, he was asked, why did you do what that voice told you to do? And this is what he said. He said, I was lonely. And he said, I felt if I did not do what that voice told me to do, that he would leave me. It would leave me. That voice would leave me. And I'd be alone. You see how devil is, folks? Do you see how clever he is? Brothers and sisters in Christ, the devil will act as your friend. Only to destroy your soul. And Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Whose voice are you listening to? If you're listening to a voice that causes you to be angry, bitter, resentful, a voice that 
causes you to feel like you have a right to retribution? You have a right to bring retribution? You have a right to bring judgment or you have a right to bring justice? That's not God's voice. The Lord says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. In fact, the Lord's voice says, put up that sword, Peter. Amen. Some of my listeners out there, they listen to the wrong voice that's telling me it's okay to have a gun, protect your family. Well, Jesus did tell them to bring, get a, each get a sword. Now, he was teaching them a lesson. He was teaching them a lesson. He said, they that take the sword will die by the sword. How come Peter didn't die by the sword? Because of the Lord's mercy. Because let me tell you, if Jesus did not pick up that ear and place it back on that man's head and heal him, they would have killed Peter on the spot. He would have been dead. Jesus protected Peter. He even said to the soldiers, he said, if you've come to arrest me, let these go their way. And they fled for their lives. Jesus was protecting Peter when he healed the man that Peter had wounded. Are you listening to me? And Jesus will heal even those you have wounded with your words. It's called forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, he'll even heal you. But see, it all comes down to, are we going to allow the Lord to heal us? Are we going to be willing to forgive? Some of us have such deep wounds. Wounds that we've inflicted on others and wounds we've been inflicted upon ourselves. And people have wounded us. And the world today runs around wounded. Wounded. And rejecting the healing bomb. Rejecting the solution. Rejecting the cure. Rejecting the answer. Amen? The world today is getting ready to blood uh, shed blood. A bridal deep. Because they will not accept the blood that's already been shed. Amen. Because they will not accept his blood. There are those in this hour that are out for blood. It starts with a thought. Every man is going to receive reward for his works. Every man. Nobody is exempt. That's what we read in the scripture. Let's look at a verse of scripture in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 20 in verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those books Things which were written in the books according to their works. What do you suppose those books were? Every work that mankind does is being recorded. God keeps perfect records. Every work. 
and go beyond that. Every thought that the human race thinks is being recorded. How's that for AI? Hmm? How's that for a master computer chip? How's that for memory? Every thought. Every work. Is being recorded. The books. Will be opened. The records. Will be opened. Nobody's going to stand before God and say. That's not me. I didn't do that. The Bible says the whole world's going to become guilty before God. No, not just based on the fact God hates them because they hate God. Not just because God is going to judge them because they are sinners, because they're wicked. But because God has evidence. He has records. He's got circumstantial evidence. To put them away. This is not a courtroom like on this earth that can be perverted or be uh, manipulated, be bought out. Listen to me, people. The judge of all the earth shall he not do justly? Oh, yes. Do you see why it's so important to accept Jesus' forgiveness? Stop fighting it. Stop wrestling with God, Jacob. Stop it. Stop trying to manipulate the truth. And let the Lord forgive you. Let the Lord help you. Let the Lord bless you, Jacob. The scripture says when Jacob stopped wrestling with the angel, the angel touched him. He came to bless him. And instead of Jacob being blessed immediately by the angel, he wrestled all night long with the one that came to bless him. That's the way we are. We wrestle with God and he's come to be good to us. We wrestle with Calvary. We we, we wrestle with the cross. We have a generation that's wrestling with a loving, merciful God. I have a whole generation before me that's fighting against the one and the only one that loves them. Taking Satan's side, the one that's against God, the one that's fighting God, the one that resists God, withstands God, the devil, the world gathering themselves together to make war with the one that died on the cross for their sins to deliver them from their sin. Amen? To wash away their guilty stains so that when the books are open, the pages are not filled with evil works, but the books, the records are filled with good works, righteous works. Not only that, but that very person that has all those good works, when the books are opened, their name is found in this other book called the Book of Life. See, those that have a record of evil works, their name is not going to be in that other book, the Book of Life. Are you listening to me? How do you convince a generation 
that's bent, bent on going to hell. They are bent on destruction. How do you convince them of the truth? I mean, their proclivity is to go to hell. That's what they want. That's their bias. That's their direction. That's their propensity. They're in their direction of hell. In fact, the Bible says they've made an agreement with hell. With death and hell. Aren't you glad that our agreement with death and hell has been disannulled, brothers and sisters? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad for Jesus? Aren't you glad? Aren't you happy that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life? Hallelujah. They came back rejoicing, the disciples, because the devils were subject to them. Through your name, we were casting out devils, and they were all excited about it. And Jesus said, don't rejoice because of that. Don't rejoice because of that. Before it's all said and done, he says, I saw Satan as lightning coming down from heaven. That's when we read in the scripture where the Bible says the devil is cast down and he's come down unto you having great wrath. He knows he has a short time. Jesus saw that. He prophesied of it. Are you listening to me, people? Jesus saw Satan's demise. And he told the disciples of it. You know, it's one thing to talk about casting out devils. But when the Lord says, I saw, I beheld, I beheld Satan, the prince and power of the air, the God of this world, like lightning cast down. Hallelujah. Don't rejoice because devil's a subject unto you. One angel is going to descend with a chain and bind that old dragon, that devil, Satan, for a thousand years. And when all that's said and done, after a thousand years, he's going to be loosed again for a season, go out and deceive the nations. And then the Bible says the Lord Jesus is going to consume the devil with his own words of his mouth. No, don't rejoice because devil's a subject unto you. What's the reason why God's people should be rejoicing? Because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Is your name there? Are your works righteous? Are your works good works? Do you return evil for evil? Or do you render good for evil? Do you overcome evil with good? Hmm? Do you bless them that curse you? Do you do good to them that are evil toward you? Those that lie on you, those that accuse you falsely? Are you overcoming evil with good, friend? I'm not telling you anything different than the Lord said himself. Bless them that curse you. Amen. Do good to them. Pray for them. Hallelujah. That is God's way. Hallelujah, people. If you are not overcoming evil with good, your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. If you don't have good works in God's records, good thoughts, pure thoughts, if any man thinks on anything, let him think on good thoughts, pure thoughts, thoughts of of honest report. 
You're not one of those that sits around thinking evil thoughts all the time, are you? Thinking about how you can get back at somebody, thinking about why someone hates you, why someone's against you. Those are evil thoughts. Let this mind be in you, friend, that is also that was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Being transformed by the renewing of our minds. See, the Lord is concerned about our thought life. Amen. Keep your mind stayed upon the Lord. He'll keep you in perfect peace. How many of God's people allow their minds to think on evil thoughts and to even premeditate how they're going to get back at someone else. How many of God's people do that? Never mind the world. We know the world does that. Amen? I'm going to say it again. If when the books are open, And there is not record of good works before the Lord. Your name's not going to be there in in the book of life, friend. You're going to be rewarded based on your works. So you can nip it in the bud in the thoughts. Amen. Glory to God, people. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, if there's any evil thoughts in us, any evil thinking, anything in us that would be displeasing to you, Lord. Think about this, brothers and sisters. Have you been thinking an evil thought? It says about that man of sin, that wicked, it says he's going to think an evil thought. That's right. Going to lead the nations against Jerusalem. Going to think an evil thought. It just starts with an evil thought. We've got a president right now in America that is thinking evil thoughts. How many know he thinks evil thoughts? He's not thinking good thoughts. He's thinking how he can get back at every single person that's ever hurt him. He's using that position to get back at everybody. And I mean everybody. If someone he feels has done him wrong, done him dirty, whether it's a country, whether it's a person, he is going after them. And he doesn't care about this country. He doesn't care about you and I. It's an eye for an eye. Are you listening to me, saints? The world around us today, vengeance is theirs. They will repay. But you and I, the meek, the battle's not ours. We turn the battle to the gate. Amen? You and I, Vengeance is the Lord's. He will repay. And if I understand anything, folks, you and I shouldn't be looking for vengeance on folks, on people. We should be praying that God will forgive. Amen? That God will help them. That God will deliver them. I know that doesn't go along with our thinking. But that's God's thinking. That's God's way. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Stephen, being stoned, said, Lay this sin not to their charge. Amen. We're not supposed to be like the world. Amen, people. Supposed to be different. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. 
Do good to them that use you despitefully. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. You and I cannot obey God's word with our own strength, with our own human love. That's why Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? Do you love the Lord with his love? Do you love him back, reciprocal with his own love? Through obedience, faith and obedience. Not because you feel like it or don't feel like it. Amen. Saul said, what wilt thou have me to do? The Lord said, you don't understand, Saul. I will show you what you must do. That's what salvation is, brothers and sisters. Not what you would like to do, what you may possibly do. When you get around to it, you'll do. Lukewarm, you'll do. No. What you must do. What must we do to be saved? They cried out. Men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You must be born again. Must. It's not a take it or leave it. There are some musts in the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will show you what you must do. Obedience is contingent. It's contingent upon salvation. Faith and obedience. You must obey the Lord to be saved. God says he'll give you the Holy Ghost if you're obedient to the gospel. Obedient. Obey the gospel. Obey the gospel, folks. And he will give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The kingdom within. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God does not come in observation. It shall be in you, springing up. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's peace. It's joy. It's righteousness. In the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Kingdom of heaven is where God resides. The kingdom of God is where the Holy Ghost is. Where his power is. Where his authority is. Are you sure you're in the kingdom, brothers and sisters? If you're not under the power of the Holy Ghost, if you're not submitted to the Lord, amen, you're not in the kingdom. If you're not born again, you're not in the kingdom. You're still in the world. Obedience. That's why the church is not going to get off the ground until the middle of the week because they don't have their wings, faith and obedience. You have just one wing, that's faith. Faith without the other wings, faith without works is dead. That eagle's going down. And if all you've got is works and no faith, you're still going down because it's not his works. You need both wings. Faith 
and obedience working together and you can wait upon the Lord renew your strength mount up with wings as eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint in the power of the Holy Ghost as you through faith obey the Spirit obedience Folks, this is how we got in trouble in the first place. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and look where we are. For the last six days, we've been in this condition. 6,000 years. Isn't it time that God's people learn the lesson and obey God? And overcome and have a right to the tree of life. Because of obedience. Hallelujah. The songwriter put it like this. Trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. Amen. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord and you don't do what I tell you to do? Why? Why do you call him Lord? He is to be obeyed. Mary said to them at the wedding, he says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Amen? How many know Jesus Christ is the Lord? Amen! Amen! Every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess that he's Lord. The idea today that you make Jesus the Lord of your life, it's not about you making him anything. He said, follow me and I will make you. He's the potter. We are the clay. It's not the other way around. We don't shape him. We don't mold him into our own image and eventually have an image of the beast. He does the shaping. He does the molding in his image, in his likeness, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Teach me, Jesus. Teach me your ways, Lord. Teach me. I want to learn how to be meek and lowly in heart and find rest unto my soul. Lord, I want to find this rest that is in you. When I cease from my own works, my own labor, my own desires, my own thoughts. You see what the Lord is doing, folks? We have to cease from trying to save ourselves if he's going to save us. Amen? Jacob was trying to save himself, wrestling with the very one that came to bless him. That's what manipulators do. They fight even that which is good. They don't even see when good comes their way. They think everybody's against them. That's who Jacob was. Amen. Paranoid. Looking over his shoulder after what he did to his brother. Constantly looking over his shoulder every single day. Such a manipulator that he even got down and bowed before his own brother and crawled on the ground to his brother. Yeah. Yeah. Esau said, you are pitiful. Amen. You are pitiful. I'm going to fight you. It's a wonder that Esau didn't say, get up on your feet, Jacob. But how many know that God was breaking Jacob? God was revealing to Jacob that when you are weak, then I am strong. 
See, it wasn't God that caused Esau to do good to Jacob. It wasn't Jacob's getting down and crawling. It was God in Jacob. After Jacob had wrestled all night and finally surrendered. I've said this for years. It's not in the struggle. It's not in the wrestling. It's in the surrender. Did you hear what I said? Your victory is in the surrender, people. Not leaning to your own understanding, not trying to manipulate and trying to figure it out on your own and trying to get someone before they get you and trying to constantly go through life, trying to figure things out. No, it's in the surrender. See what happens when a police officer tells you to put your hands up and you don't do what he tells you to do. In this day and age, you'd probably be shot. I recently heard about a man that was shot. He was helping an autistic person. And the, they called the police on because the person that had autism was causing such a ruckus. The police officer went out there and shot this man that was already on the ground in submission. And he looks up at him and he says, why'd you shoot me? And the officer said, I don't know. I don't know why I shot you. Wrong answer. He was racist. The man was black. The officer was white. I know why he shot him. Because he took the opportunity. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Evil works are going to be rewarded with evil. Amen. There should be nothing but good works on record for you and I, and all the evil works should have been washed away, blotted out. Amen? Did you know one evil work? One evil work can destroy a whole lifetime of good work. Did you know that? Did you know that? You can lose all your reward and be saved as by fire. If right now, R.W. Shambuck, if he was to repent before God, did you know that he would not have any reward for the whole time he was in the ministry up to where he turned away from the Lord? He's going to lose all of that, even if he was to turn back to God now but he would be saved as by fire. Choosing the reward of the wicked, choosing the reward of money over God's heaven, over the riches of the kingdom. That's what folks are doing today, choosing the riches of this world. How foolish, Shambuck, how foolish, A man with a ministry like that, with the power of God, how in the world could he be deceived? Same way you and I can be deceived, people. Same way that William Branham was deceived. Same way that Jimmy Swaggart's been deceived. When we start thinking that we can't be deceived... Take heed lest you think you stand, lest you fall. When you think you're standing, when you're like Jacob and you think you can just take care of it all by yourself and you can even take on an angel. See, Jacob didn't know he was wrestling with an angel. It wasn't until the sun came up in the morning and he realized that which he was wrestling with he couldn't see with his physical eyes. He was so shocked. He stopped. Hallelujah. When are we going to stop? When are we going to be still and know that he's God? 
Can you just look at this picture with me, people? Jacob, in the middle of the night, is wrestling for his life, seeking to save his life. He's fighting and struggling all night long. You talk about the gentleness of God, that this angel would wrestle with Jacob all night long. All night long. The breaking of the day. He even told Jacob, he said, it's getting ready to be daylight. Let me go. I'll bless you. Hallelujah. The sun comes up. And Jake, can you imagine, folks, in your own life, in your own experience, you're wrestling with something and you think it's a human being. You think it's your brother Esau. You don't know what you're wrestling with. Can you imagine being so manipulative that all night long, you're not giving up. You're not quitting. You want to win. Only to find out that you've been wrestling with God. Wrestling with God. That's where most of God's people are right now. Wrestling with the Lord. They wonder, Lord, why am I not blessed? Why do I go about saying to everyone, telling everyone I'm blessed when they ask me how I'm doing, but I know deep down in my heart I'm not blessed? You haven't stopped wrestling with God. You're still wrestling with Him. You haven't ceased. You haven't surrendered. That's what God's waiting for. He's waiting for you, the manipulator, to stop, to cease, to quit, and to surrender. Manipulators don't quit. They don't give up. They don't surrender. And it's a miracle that Jacob did. You should be asking the Lord, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Oh. And I'm expecting you to be gentle, but I haven't been gentle. Amen? If you want the Lord to be gentle with you, you have to be gentle. If you want the Lord to be merciful to you, you've got to be merciful. If you want the Lord to be kind to you, you've got to be kind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name, people. So when God opens the books in front of you, what will be there? It won't be a mixture. No, 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 no. There won't be books open that show evil works and good works and you're still going to go to heaven. Doesn't work that way, people. If your evil works have not been forgiven, if they've not been washed in the blood, if they've not been blotted out, they will be held against you in God's court of law. That's right. Nobody's getting by the judge. And just in case you think you're going to lean on Jesus at that time, he's the judge. Do you hear what I said? He's the judge. He's not the deliverer anymore. He's not the savior. He's not the one that's going to show you mercy. He's the judge. Who are you going to lean on now? You better lean on him now. You better lean now. With everything you got, you better lean on Jesus, brothers and sisters, for his judgment. For his forgiveness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord.